My name's Tony Scottsco. I'm a artist and surf fishing guy. When did you start getting into fishing? And how? When I was probably just about when I first started to walk. My father loved fishing and yeah, just uh, I can remember so many days, you know, freshwater fishing, catching bluegills, catching trout with them. My first time striper fishing, heading down to a uh, beach in New Jersey and going over the Ramp River Bridge and it's still dark out and he says, wow, could you smell that? I go, well, yeah, I do, it smells good. Yeah, he said, there's gonna be bluefish on the Sandy Hook. Sure enough, got there a day break, there was fish everywhere. It was pretty cool. But Is that my father really got me into it and uh, it's just, Great. Is that where you grew up in New Jersey? I did. Okay. Yeah, I moved to the Cape in 1974, and <clears throat> this is as close as I come to the bridge in a long time. All right, awesome. So, um, what? Now that you've been fishing, what inspired you to start taking the hobby further? And you started to build your own your own lures, correct? Well, my father pretty much did the plug building and stuff. I like to use them and do things with them. Uh, he came up with so many innovative ideas. He came up with an ear, eel plug uh, called Mr. Wiggly. I have some of the original ones here at the show. And uh, it, it's just stuff that wasn't out there, really. There was nothing like it, you know, to do it. And uh, it's art, you know, like to take a piece of wood and carve it and put it together and paint it and it catches fish. It's just, it's awesome. I always like antique decoys and things like that. And the, uh, what's happened with the plug uh, industry is just incredible what's out there now. Yeah, what do you think is the, um, you know, I know your dad, I've saw your dad's plugs, I've seen your plug. What has made the business become a business? Now it's a business. It's, it used to be for catching fish, but it's a business now. Yeah, what? it is. You know, I, I, I was involved with it for a while. I took a couple of his plugs and tried to market them. Had it for years, but uh, I have a box of plugs here. When they're gone, that's it. That's it's over, over. Uh, uh, there's just so many people making lures and stuff right now. It's uh, crazy. It's a crazy business to keep at it and actually make money. Yeah. Out. Do you collect lures yourself? Other makers? Yeah, yeah, I do. I collect all kinds of old stuff. And who inspires you? Like, you know, I, I know you have a, a style, but what style inspires you? What makers of the past? I, you know, there's makers I don't even know. Usually my eyes inspire me when I see it. Being an artist, I don't know. I know what I like. When I look at something, uh, I look at it kind of like a piece of art and try to visualize what went into it to be made and painted and how it works. Uh, there's no one person I could say is my favorite, you know? What what makes what makes a lure, aside from the look, effective is to catch fish. Um, is it color? Is it style? Is it body style? They say if you had a lure that was just clear plastic, you'd probably catch more fish than anything. Uh, there's so much that goes into it color-wise, you know, there, you, there'll be days when you think the color doesn't matter. Uh, I remember one night I was into a lot of fish, and at the time I was using a bomber. I had a solid-sided bomber, black and silver, and I had a clear-sided bomber that had the mirror finish inside. It was more translucent. I was getting probably seven to one on the clear-sided one. Other nights, they might want the solid one, but uh, you can never figure it out what it does. It's just like, you know, I've had nights where I made a cast and my line wrapped on the front hook and you start reeling in, the plugs go, doesn't look like anything and a fish comes up and hit it. You know, I think I think in fishing the, the best thing is every time I cast out, I just think I'm gonna get a fish. I never think I'm not, you know, and I think having a confidence, you can catch them on a tree branch with a hook. That's true, okay. What do you think about the saltwater? Could you talk, talk about this club and what it means to you and the collector and you being an artist, what does this club mean? It's unbelievable. Like coming in here this morning, just looking at the, the displays of plugs that you, you think back, they go back so far, you know, and they're just, uh, everybody thinks they invented something new and you look back and back like in the 1800s, somebody did it already, you know. It's, uh, it, it's a great thing with the club 
does to put this on display for people to see it. Anybody that likes fishing that does it, you know, especially striped bass, not to take a look at some of this stuff, especially some of the old stuff, some of the old squid plugs and this and that, what went into them, the minds of the people that made them. You know, I'd be down the cellar with my father when I was making plugs, and man, he'd come up with stuff that was just bizarre. But it's, it's just, uh, I don't know, a lot of personality goes into a lot of pieces of wood. Okay. And this is the place to see it. It's a great organization. Awesome. All right. Um, let me ask you one last question. When you're at your table, what are people talking to you about? Uh, most of the people... You know, when I tell them they're my dad's plugs that go back to the 50s right there in front of them. And I tell them a little bit of history about striped bass. Uh, they seem to really, people that really don't know a lot about it, once you start talking to them and explaining a few things, they get really, you can see it in their eyes. They love it, you know. It, it's great, especially if they have like younger kids that are into it too. It's a, it's a great thing.